to another video. My name is Commander Belay, and welcome to another tactical analysis video for the Sheffield United game versus Chelsea, where Chelsea were 2 1 victors in the game and secured the three points. But I'll be delving into the tactics how Tuchel uh, won the game for Chelsea, how he just about beat Chris Wilder in the tactical battle. I'll be delving into how Sheffield United made it so difficult for us tactically regarding the overlapping centre backs the midfield and the wing backs as they match our three to back formation but before I do get into the tactics I'll be giving out the lineups how both teams set up in the game and then of course I'll be delving into the tactical analysis video for you guys but before I do get into it make sure you smash the like button subscribe hit the bell notification the comment down below your thoughts opinions in the comment section below but without further ado, let's get straight into today's tactical analysis video for you guys now starting off with how Sheffield United set up they set up in a 3-5-2 formation which is their classic formation that Chris Wilder likes Set up Aaron Ramsdale in goal, Basham, Egan, and Brian as the three centre backs, Low and Bogle as the wing backs of Lundstrom, Norwood, and Fleck as the three central midfielders with McGoldrick and Burke. Now, McGoldrick, he didn't initially start the game, he did come on in the game, but again, he has a fantastic record against the likes of Chelsea, and they essentially matched our three to back formation. We played the three to back formation with Thomas Tuchel, however, we played a slightly different variation again, three to back with four in the field, but we played a three, four, one, two with Mason Mann as that you know, fake number. 10 position, Christensen, Rudiger, Aspilicueta, James, Chihuahua as the wing back, Jorginho and Kovacic as the pivot, Mason Mount as the fake number 10 with Timo Werner and Giroud as our two strikers up front. Heavily rotated team, hence why the performance and the intensity wasn't at 100%. Now let's get straight into the tactics. Now Sheffield United and Chris Wilder made it extremely difficult for us. Now normally with Chris Wilder's team and Sheffield United, they usually use, as I said, a 5-3-2, a passive mid-block system. That's how they operated against Chelsea. They had a very passive mid-block. They keep the shape compact and essentially they don't high press. They don't, they didn't And in general with a Sheffield United squad and a Sheffield United team and a Chris Wilder team, they don't press our centre-backs. They don't press us too highly because they want to keep that shape compact. They only press with their centre midfielder and their two strikers. Other than that, they usually don't press because they want to keep their shape very, very compact. Um, they essentially want to clog the middle and they defend very, very aggressively, which is exactly what they've done against us yesterday. They defend aggressively out wide and wide areas. They build attacks um, and they essentially by creating overloads out wide. Now, Sheffield United, you know, they play through the back formation and their wing backs are crucial. Now, as you can see, now, as you can see, they have auxiliary midfielders in Norwood, Lundstrom and Fleck. Now, by having these auxiliary um uh, by having these auxiliary midfielders, they essentially block the infield passes. You have the fullbacks. The fullbacks are crucial here. And the reason why is because they create those, those 2v1 overloads on the wide channels. And it creates a lot of problems for the likes of Chelsea. And it caused a lot of problems. Hence why in the first half, the performance was really poor. They targeted the likes of Georgina and Kovacic. They were pressed very, very aggressively. We couldn't move the ball. We didn't have enough space to utilise to essentially move the ball quickly. Move the ball a lot more fluidly because they have auxiliary midfielders that are pressing us really high in our midfield you know compacting the midfield and the wing backs creating the overloads now getting into the overlapping center backs which is a system that Chris Wilder loves to use in Brian and Basham this was crucial because what essentially the, the overlapping centre backs do is that the right centre back and the left centre back push up to provide those overloads and the central centre back stays the same. So Egan in this position, he was a central centre back. He stayed stationary in his position fixed. However, Brian and Basham, they were the overlapping centre backs and they pushed up to the wing backs to provide those 2v1 overloads out wide. This was done to essentially force Chelsea with the likes of your team over and Mason Mount to, pre to essentially retreat and come back to help out defensively because when you have these overloads coming in of course it becomes a 2v1 and that causes many problems to your team so obviously Mason Mann and Timo Werner they both had to retreat a lot to essentially prevent them from causing you know going into transition and countering us significantly so and by doing that by allowing Mason Mount and Timo Werner tracking back a lot it means that we haven't got any players up front to counter-attack allowing Sheffield United to recover in time and it essentially prevents teams from counter-attacking Sheffield United which is a clever tactic from Chris Wilder. Now getting into how Thomas Sewell uh, combated this and essentially prevented this from happening of course we matched their three to back formation albeit a very different variation we had Chihuahua and James as our fullbacks now 
out. A lot of us expected Marcus Alonso to be our left wing back. That wasn't simply the case. Ben Chilwell was our left wing back. And I understand Ben Chilwell was a lot more dynamic compared to Marcus Alonso. If you're playing a wing back position in a free back formation, you have to be dynamic. You have to be able to get up and down the pitch on a consistent basis. And Chilwell, he's got a much better engine. He's got he's more dynamic compared to Marcus Alonso. So in that sense, it made more sense to play against him. And by having and essentially prevented you know Sheffield United from you know causing and causing those two of you on overloads out wide and James and Chihuahua were crucial because James obviously is much more better defensively compared to Callum Antidore and if you had Callum Antidore on the right wing back he's not as great defensively and that could have caused us a lot of problems especially down Sheffield United's left hand side if Callum Antidore is not great defensively Sheffield United could have targeted that and that could have caused us a lot of problems and James of course a little bit more physical a little bit more aggressive and better defensively all round it made sense to put James there and Chilwell to uh, essentially prevent those counter-attacks, prevent uh, you know those Sheffield United causing those overloads and causing us a lot of problems on the attack. Now, as I stressed, because of the overlapping centre-backs, it caused Mason a lot of the times. Mason Man is a very high-intensive energy player. You know, he likes to you know run around, essentially win the ball back with ease. Timo Werner had to track back a lot, and if you notice in the game, Timo Werner was always collecting the ball from deep areas, which is not what you want Timo Werner to do, because Timo Werner, he's a guy that utilizes space, that runs into space using his acceleration. However, he was dropping too deep because Jorginho and Kovacic were targeted. Jorginho and Kovacic were unable to control the game in the first half, especially Jorginho, they were pressed heavily, meaning we couldn't find those balls in between the lines, the likes of Timo Werner or Mason Mounts, etc. That then left Giroud isolated because Timo Werner was dropping deep to collect the ball because Jorginho and Kovacic couldn't find him because they're getting pressed. Mason Mount and Werner were dropping deep, leaving Giroud isolated, hence why Giroud had a very poor first half. Now that changed in the second half. Werner was making a lot more infield runs in the second half and towards the end of the first half, that's where the first goal came. Werner made a run to stretch that defence, essentially broke the lines, pass came in, he cut it back at a 45 degree angle, Mason Mount slots it 1-0. But the positioning was key and Sheffield United and Chris Wilder really targeted this and credit to Wilder for this, but Tuchel sorted this out in the second half because he knew that Georgina and Kovacic were essentially getting pressed a lot. He then changed the tactics and gave them more protection, protection by allowing Reese James to be more of an inverted fullback and chill off to tuck in. Of course, Marcus Lowe was going to enter the frame and then a wing back and he's more of a goal scorer, which forced Sheffield United to retreat a bit. Now by giving Georgina and Kovacic extra protection and space, this meant that Mason Mount could and Werner could be essentially pushing more upfield, allowing Werner to make more of those runs, causing Sheffield United to all sorts of problems. So again, credit to Thomas Tuchel for tweaking things tactically. And essentially when Kante came on, we know his energy, we know his, his high athleticism. Of course, it really caused Sheffield United too many problems in that regard. But overall, with some luck for us in the game, and let's be serious now, the first half of Sheffield United were the superior team. We were very lucky to be leading the game at half-time, but that is football. Football is about fine margins, and we were very fortunate to be leading at half-time. A stupid own goal by Rüdiger cost us. However, the three centre-backs for Chelsea were crucial. Rüdiger making important blocks, important interceptions. Christensen had, was a, you know, it was a unit this game. It was absolutely fantastic. Aspen Aguetta, with his leadership and experience, marshalling that back three. And Mendy had to, make a, had to make a couple of really good saves as well. So, all in all, very impressive. Chris Wilder caused us many, many problems, especially with a short turnover, with a heavily rotated side that we had. Credit to him, tactically, he nearly caught out Thomas Tuchel. But again, we had too much quality for the likes of Sheffield United, and then we ended up pulling through. But yeah, we got the three points and that was the main objective. But that is me wrapping up the tactical analysis video for you guys. If you did enjoy this video too, smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment down below your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. And I'll see all of you guys for my next video. Peace.